Hey everybody, my name's Yvette, coming to you from Yvette Marie's Fine Arts and Crafts, and today I am finally going to get to show you how to make these cute little boot cuffs that I have so many people requesting a pattern for. Um, the, I will have a written pattern available in my Etsy shop and my Craftsy shop, um, however if you want to just watch how to make them, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make them here in the video. This video will probably be broken up in either two or three parts since it might be a little bit long um, for the process to make them. And normally I go really slow in my videos for beginners. Um, this video here will not be quite as slow as most of my videos so you probably want to have a little bit of crochet knowledge before you start this video. But you can, you know, if you're a beginner and you want to try to make it, go ahead and slow the video down or you know, just keep on, uh, just pause it once in a while. So you'll need your yarn. Today I am using one of my favorite brands because it has a really soft sheen to it. Um, and it's really soft and they just work up really nicely. I use it in most of my products that I make. It's Yarn B Soft Secret and you can get this at Hobby Lobby. Or you can use a similar yarn uh, which is Karen's Simply Soft. It's a very similar type of um, yarn with a real soft sheen. You'll also need a yarn needle. My preference is the metal ones just because they seem to slide through the yarn a lot easier and not get stuck when you're trying to sew, uh, sew seams closed. A pair of scissors. Buttons if you want to put buttons on for decorative um, purposes. And your crochet hook. Today I'm using a size J crochet hook. And this will kind of give just a standard women's size um, boot cuff here. Now you probably could use a smaller crochet hook or even a larger one if you want to adjust the size of the boot um, cuff, but this is just a standard um, kind of a medium size boot cuff. So today we're going to start off by doing the rib stitch that I originally showed this boot cuff in the video for this rib stitch here and I'm going to be working with a half double crochet rib stitch. Now I'm going to leave about a 10 inch tail or so, maybe about a 12 inch tail for sewing up the edge and we're going to end up cutting part of that off but I like to leave a little extra in case I need it. So I'm just going to leave about a 10 or 12 inch tail and we're just going to create our um, a chain of 10. So we're going to start off with our slip stitch on the the uh, crochet hook and then I'm going to crochet um, excuse me I'm going to slip stitch 10 more or chain 10 more one two and I'm going to do this a little bit on the loose side I don't want these to be really really tight three four five six seven eight nine 10. Okay, so you notice they're just a little bit loose. They're not really tight. And that is because when I get to sewing up the back on the on the back side, I don't want this to pucker and pull. I want this to be able to be stitched nice um, nicely without puckering. All weird. Okay, so to do our first or I actually consider it the second row because I consider this, I know in some patterns it may not, but I consider this my first row. That way when I'm counting I know where to start and it's just easier for me. So I'm going to skip the first two and I'm going to half double crochet into this third chain here. So we're just going to wrap the yarn around the crochet hook, skip the first two, and half double crochet into the third one. Now do this a little bit loosely, kind of pull this a little bit when you um, before you pull this through so that it doesn't bunch up too much and curl when you're um, when you're working with it. And this is just for some of you beginners out there who may not realize when you're coming around sometimes this can um, curl a little bit and I'll show you in a minute. So we're just going to go ahead and go down the row and you're going to end up having eight half double crochets do these a little bit loosely for this first row. Pull up your yarn just a slight bit before you go into your next one. Pull up just a little bit. OK. 
okay, and this should be nine. And in that one last one, oops, 10. Okay, so now sometimes if you pull too tight, this end here will end up curling and curving and kind of pulling. So you just wanna crochet that first row a little bit loosely so that you have a nice, um, nice edge there and it's nice and straight. So then at the end of the row, you're going to chain two, as you always would for a double or a half double crochet. Then you're going to flip your work over this way. Now for the half double crochet, now we're going to go ahead and work into just the back chain. Here's what you're going to look at from the front. And you should probably already know this from the video, the original video on how to do the half double crochet rib stitch. So I'm just going to very quickly, very briefly show you how to do that. So we're going to only be using this back row to double, half double crochet into and we're going to ignore the front portion of this row here. So you're going to have your two chains here, wrap your yarn around your hook and you're going to half double crochet into that first one and in each one all the way down. Okay, so you're going to half double crochet into the back of each stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and work down the rest of the row and you, whoops, you can work into the, um, down the rest of yours as well. Now, when you get to the end, you want to make sure that you're going to have eight half double crochets. Now you're going to see at the end, sometimes it gets a little tricky. You're like, you might wonder which, you know, where you go into or you want to know it's your last stitch. When you get to the end, you're going to still see that extra area sticking out and you're going to see the last stitch is kind of get, getting curved around the end from where you actually, whoops, excuse me, it's kind of getting curved and it's kind of hidden back here right there. So you might have to kind of dig a little bit to pick up with your fingernail that stitch depending on the size. Um, let me do that again because I think it's, I went off the camera. Um, Sometimes it gets hidden back there, so you have to use your fingernail to pull it. So you're going to get behind there. Now, the way it looks like this, some people may think, oh, I still have an ex another stitch to do because this is sticking out just a little bit farther than the rest of the row. It really isn't. It's just the way it looks when these curves come around. It makes it look like it's sticking out. So in the end, you're actually going to have, when you finish, it's going to kind of be cute in a way that it has these little bumps here, but it's not real noticeable. So that's kind of where it's supposed to be. But what you'll do is you'll just count your stitches and you'll just count from the first one at the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you'll have nine will actually be your um, yarn on your hook so it's not really a ninth stitch so to speak in this particular case. So just go through and count all your stitches here. Make sure you have eight and then you'll be fine. Go ahead and chain two more and again we're just going to half double crochet in the back portion of the stitch across the whole row. Now my recommendation is every row or two, just check and make sure you have eight. When I was first starting out, I would get zipping along and I would not catch at the end. I would think, okay, so here I am at the end and I would do that last stitch. And when I first was crocheting, I kept thinking, oh, this is sticking out a little too far. I have to find another stitch in there. And I wasn't really paying attention and counting my stitches at that point. I was just kind of working along, working along. And then after a while, my pattern would kind of veer off as I was creating patterns. I'd end up having these, you know, things that were getting, you know, farther and farther and farther out to the side. And I realized I was adding stitches without meaning to. So just count every couple rows one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, and then again the ninth one will be on your. It's not really counted, but in, uh, in this pattern, but it's on your hook. Okay, so we're, I'll just do one more row, and then I'll go ahead and skip ahead to um, the next portion, um, which will be actually working around in the pattern. So you're going to actually create. 41 rows of this. So you might want to keep a little piece of paper and just maybe mark them. Your first row is going to count as the row that you actually chained. In, in this particular case, I count that as, as the first row. So you're going to have 41 rows in the end. So let's just do one more row. I've already chained two at the end and I flipped it over here now. And I'm just going to half double crochet in the back of each one again. And again, I'm going a little bit faster than I do in my beginner videos. Um, at this point, you'll probably want to have some experience in um, crocheting. Oops. Okay, and again, there's that one you have to kind of find back there. Right there. So I'm just going to use my fingernail and kind of pull it up over, catch it and half double crochet. Okay, so when you have 41 rows, and I'll skip ahead in just a moment and show you at that point, um, once you have 41 rows, your tail will be on one end and your crochet hook will be on the other end. It'll be one, two, three, four, five. So it'll be, your crochet hook will be at the opposite end of where your tail is going to be that you originally started with. So I'm going to go ahead and pause now. I'm going to go ahead and work up to 41. If you want to go ahead and do the same thing, I'll meet you back here in just a couple minutes. Okay, so I just finished my 41st row here. And you'll see, fold it in half like this. It will match up. With the original one here, okay? So we've got 41 rows, and now I'm just going to loosen up this chain that we're working with for a minute. And I'm going to take a minute to stitch up this area here and close it so that we can continue working around and around this way. So originally we were working left to right, now we're going to start working up the boot cuff in this direction here. So I'm just going to now I'm going to be working with it so that this is I'm going to keep working around that way. So what I want to do is I want to turn it inside out. So I'm going to flip it around so that this is on the right hand side. And you can do it the opposite way, it really doesn't matter. It depends on if you're left or right-handed. I do everything right-handed. I'm not, haven't attempted making any left-handed videos at this point. I don't know if I ever will, so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stitch into each of these and close off so we make it a circle. Everybody has different ways of doing this. I like to go into the first area and then what I like to do is pull, I like to come around and grab this front one here and leave this second one. And I'll show you in just a minute why. Basically, we're gonna be able to see this pattern on the outside if we do it that way and there won't, it'll be more of a seamless finish. So when I go like this, I'm gonna take, whoops, I'm gonna grab one of the stitches or one of the chains here. And then I'm gonna try to ignore this front one and I'm gonna or the back one, come into the front one, like that. I do it again, pick up my next one, ignore this area here, and go into the front one. Oops. Now I'm not gonna really, I don't wanna be super tight about this, 
down because we don't want this to pucker all weird when it's finished. But at the same time, we don't want to be too, you know, super loose so that it's falling apart either, or looks like it's falling apart. Again, just go through the back here, ignore this one, and go into that front loop that you're as closest to you. Okay, just keep working up the whole thing that way. Make sure these are, you know, lined up nicely and that you're working in stitches. You know, carefully work the last one because I've still got this stitch here that I'm actually in right now with my yarn. But I'm going to work that. I want to close it. So I'm actually going to go into both of them in this case just to get just to close the whole thing off. And then what I usually do is I go just go down a couple stitches. and then you can tie it off any way you want. What I usually do is go through a stitch two or three times and then those stitches I just created I'll just come through here with my yarn and I'll tie off here. I'll put a couple knots in it and then trim it about an eighth of an inch or so so that it is um, fairly secure. So I'm going to just go make a couple really tight knots, create this second one over the first one, pull as tight as I can, and then just carefully snip off the yarn so that will hide inside. Okay, so now when I was showing you how to work the back portion of the stitch, or when I was um, showing you how just to grab that um, area that was closest to you, so now when we turn it around to look at the outside, you're going to see that it has more of an appearance like the other ones. Otherwise, it would look like you skipped a row here, and then it would look kind of like that, where it would just kind of all mesh together, and you wouldn't see this raised area here so that it looks uniform all around the whole thing. Okay, so now I'm going to just flip this so that I can get to my yarn easily here. And, oops, now I'm just going to reinsert my hook. Now, let's hold off on that for just a minute. Okay, so now the way we're going to be working, and I'm going to do a second video, we're going to go to the next video on this one, is we're going to actually be working into stitches this way and creating in the round from this point on. So right now we just have this little circle. And we'll go into um, these stitches here and we'll begin working up in this manner, away from this area here. So. I'll attach a link for the second video. This is your first video. I'll attach a link to the second video for the second video so you can continue working on your boot cuffs.